But we are going to begin with the ongoing fallout today from that very controversial tweet from Trump surrogate Pastor Mark Burns. And a warning here, the image might be offensive to some. His tweet showed Hillary Clinton in blackface, and it accused her of pandering to the black community. Yesterday on MSNBC, Pastor Burns defended the tweet. I truly apologize for the offensive blackface image of, of that cartoon and the, um, uh, the depiction of um, um, the blackface is offensive uh, by itself. And um, as an African American man in America, um, I, I, I don't I don't stand by uh, anyone portraying themselves in a blackface. But the message um, that I intended, um, I still stand behind. Uh, but my apology is because I think my message got lost. Uh, in in the, in the translation. Let's clarify, that was not Pastor Mark Burns on MSNBC yesterday. That was him today apologizing uh, for that tweet. And Pastor Mark Burns now joins us. Pastor, thank you for taking a few minutes. And let me just start on the, the question of the apology. We, we played it there uh, with a little transcript on the screen. But I want to be clear on this, and I want you to be clear on this with, uh, with our viewers. What exactly are you apologizing for here? Is it just the image, or is it anything else? You know, I'm only apologizing for the black face that was portrayed on the image, but I am not without a shadow of a doubt apologizing for the message that I was trying to, to get out to the public. I do not apologize uh, for the message that it stood behind. I mean, the, the Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party uh, have and do pander, um, do pander after black people in this country. And so, you know, again, I, I apologize to the defendant people. Um, and the last thing I want to do is to, to create an offense. And for those that was deeply offended personally, uh, for that, uh, I am sorry. But I do not apologize for the message. So, the message is clear. I stand by it. Well, the, I, the message, that, that, that's an interesting point, though, on the message. You're saying you're accusing her of pandering. You're accusing her of taking black voters for granted. I think a lot of people would say that's a, that's a legitimate question to raise. That's a legitimate point of debate. But the message went beyond that. When you bring blackface into it, when you bring something that inflammatory into it, and you couple it with your support of a presidential candidate who's called Hillary Clinton a bigot, that's sending a message that says something a lot deeper and a lot uglier about Hillary Clinton. Do you apologize for casting a versions on Hillary Clinton that way. Well, listen, I'm a black man in America, so I, I know I, I know what the black face means um, and I know what it stands for. And, you know, and I don't stand behind uh, the, the, the you know, I don't stand behind uh, the imagery of the black face. But once again, uh, the very fact is the black vote, the, the voter block of the African-American community, uh, the Democratic Party and, and Hillary Clinton knows that that vote in largely already belongs to her. And what is more offensive, while we're sitting here debating over a cartoon, what's more offensive is the very fact that uh, Hillary Clinton doesn't own up to the felt policies uh, that has impacted the, you know, many in the African American community. And let's be really honest here. You know, I'm going to be honest, and I'm going to say this here on MSNBC. The very fact that we're talking about the african-american community as though we're one group of people and we're all the same i think that is very offensive that's politically uh, correct pc at the highest caliber that's what donald trump stands for we have to eliminate the language that creates that creates this type of a language that says, hey, black people are the same everywhere. Well, that's not the case. I, we bleed red like everybody else. I, I, I'm not a part, and, 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 and let me say this one more step further, is, the, 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 let me say this, there is no such thing as the real African-American community. It doesn't really exist. That's a myth because black people are just Americans. The black, a black person in Oregon does not have the, the same issues that a black person who, who might live in the urban cities of Baltimore. We, 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 we put Donald Trump and other politicians in the same boat. That they're darned if they do and they're darned if they well, don't. Pa Pastor, we say I, let me Trump, just, Donald Trump, let me, how let me, come you don't? 
let me let me put it this way, let Pastor. Me, let me I, I, I take your I take I, I take your point, but let me let me just, just follow let, let me, me follow up point. with this on yeah. on the issue of this presidential race, on the issue of this choice that you're talking about here between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. The black community, black voters, do seem to be speaking with one voice. I mean, I can show you this. This is our most recent poll. The black black voters in this country asked to choose between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I have to tell you, I've never seen a number like this. One percent for Donald Trump, 91 for Hillary Clinton. When you look at a number like that, do you think Donald Trump, do you think Donald Trump has done anything to deserve just one percent support from black voters right now? I think the, that the very fact that we are forcing our politicians to come up with policies for a particular group like the African-American group, like it belong, like, like it impacts all of us. Okay, see, Donald Trump is, is darn if you do, and he's darn if you don't. We will say, Donald Trump, what is your policy to the African-American community? And Donald Trump uh, begins to talk to African-Americans, and he says, if you, you, you know, in some areas, you can walk down the street, and you can get shot, and you can die. And then once he says a very true fact, because it just happened, uh, just happened a couple of days ago, very sad story in Chicago, and when, when he says that, you know, the community rises up and said, oh my God, how can Donald Trump talk to all black people like we all are fearful of getting shot, okay? So then he's either darned for not talking about the African American community, and then he's darned for talking about the African community because we say not all of us are like that. Why is he talking to all black people like we're, like, like we're all one, uh, like, like, like all of us are fearful of our lives? The fact of the matter is this, and I'm gonna say a very real reality. Most people may not wanna talk about it, and I'm sure people will want to argue it. But the, the, there's no such thing as the African-American community. We're only Americans. We're only Americans. And it is only until we stop forcing our politicians to pander after particular groups and just start talking to us as we, the people of the United States, that's when we begin to eliminate the divisions within our communities. And the Democratic Party are doing a wonderful job in keeping us divided. And the more they divide us, the more they can control us. And the more they control us, the more they keep a welfare state to millions of blacks in this country to where welfare never creates prosperity, it only creates dependency. All right. And the Democratic Party say, I will so give you but just let me, let me, let me ask that you that you won't die, but I will never give you enough that you'll thrive. Okay, your, your indictment of the Democratic Party, again, is you're saying the Democratic Party takes black voters for granted in this country. Let me, and, and views yes, them absolutely. sort of, views them transactionally, views them as votes for an election, and that's it. Let me show you this, though. I'm sure you've seen it. People were talking about this this weekend. Donald Trump, upon learning the news that the cousin of Dwayne Wade, the NBA player, had been killed in Chicago over the weekend, Donald Trump tweeted this. Dwayne Wade's cousin was just shot and killed walking her baby in Chicago. Just what I've been saying, African Americans will vote Trump. Does that not send a, a clear message from Donald Trump to black voters that he views them transactionally, mainly as votes, that his reaction to learning about a murder, to learning about the death of a black person in Chicago is to say more votes for me? Listen, I'm gonna say this, uh, that, that my friend Dar Scott said, and I'm gonna say it again. Listen, if I am uh, telling you, don't go down that street, because if you go down to that street, you're gonna fall in the ditch. Don't go down the street, because if you go down the street, you're gonna fall in the ditch. Don't go down the street, because if you go down the street, you may fall in the ditch. And you go down the street, and you then fall in the ditch, the first thing I'm gonna say to you is, I told you so. I'm telling you right now, don't go down the street. Now you're in the ditch. That's all Donald Trump was saying. It is a sad, tragic event that took place. Now four children, are without a mother. Four babies are without a mother. Donald Trump has been declaring, and, and it is not nothing brand new. The very fact that we wait for uh, Dwayne Wade's uh, uh, cousin to die, uh, um, and, and that, her name is Miss Albrecht, by the way, um, she was a real person. Uh, and now there are four children who did are Donald now Trump, without did, did, did a Donald mother Trump send that because you said, of you, that. Yes, you, did Donald Trump send that message with a tweet that immediately says more votes for me? He didn't seem to be treating her as a real person. No, no, what Donald Trump was simply saying is, I am telling you that it is a very fact. You all want to say, hey, oh my God, Donald Trump said you can walk down the street and get shot. Oh, how, how he's racist for saying that. And then a couple of days later, a, a, a woman who was doing nothing walks down the street and gets shot. 
And the sad part about it, this is the real tragic event. The very sad part about it is, it is only because it was Dwayne Wade's cousin that we're even talking about it. When before her, six, seven people were killed. The very fact we're talking about the deaths that have been taking place in, 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 in the south side of Chicago, it's not nothing brand new. The fact that this is what I mean by pandering after the races, because we should have been discussing that if it wasn't just a black issue, but we make it an American issue, then all eyes will be marching down there. It wouldn't be that Black Lives Matter would be leading the fight, but all lives would be leading the fight. Because what happens to you as an American happens to me. We have the greatest, strongest military in the whole world. And one of the creeds of our great, strong military is that we leave no man behind. Men have died died in, the, in, in, in trying to rescue just one man, just one right. man. And the very fact is, if we take up that banner, that's why we together pledge allegiance to the flag okay. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Okay. Hear me? One nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for Everybody, black right. lives, Pastor, white lives, Pastor all Mark, lives, sir. Pastor Mark Burns, appreciate the time. Thank you. Join now so by. Much. To you. All right, gonna join now by Michael Steele. He's the former chair of the Republican National Committee and an MSNBC political analyst. Well, Michael, 